Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spot Convention with the Willie Common Book Roundup. We've covered last week's books, now it's time to get started on this week's books. Kicking things off, we've got Uncanny Spider-Man, number one, or three, number three. Where we left off, um, <clears throat> Nightcrawler had, uh, had a run-in with the Wild Pack, including Silver Sable, and, well, Silver Sable briefly gave in to her, her attraction to uh, Kurt and uh, revealed that Director Vulture was uh, using uh, the uh, Technarchy's uh, transmode virus at, as a means of creating, of augmenting one, his, his flight suit as well as uh, captured mutants. So, the issue begins, a uh, deviant uh, kaiju pops up in uh, Central Park, Nightcrawler shows up, there is apparently a, uh, a transcript of everything said, which is not, a, which is presumably not, not entirely be accurate. The Wild Pack uh, tried to stop him, but... Uh, he managed to avoid, evade them. Um, <clears throat> but uh, apparently, the, while Nimrod wants the uh, Wild Pack's uh, contract terminated, it seems that uh, they will hold. You know, they'll 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 stop when uh, the job is done. But this apparently is making uh, Director Vulture's Hound program a bit more uh, useful. And it turns out that uh, Sable and uh, Nightcrawler are frequently spending uh, evenings together. There's also a write a Orcus write up on uh, Silver Sable International, namely the fact that they are pretty much the uh, GDP of uh, the Balkan country of Sankaria. And, um, it's also things such as the SSI spectrum of products, uh, means there are a few mil military organizations in the world, state or private, that do not feature the SSI logo among weapons, corps, or advisors. But, however, the Wild Wildpack, this, uh, that uh, most dramatic contracts were addressed. Headed in the field by Silver herself, secretive squad ha has been implicated without evidence in coups, abductions, regime changes, and guerrilla actions across the, war across the globe. So impressive is their supposed track record that uh, literature for, for Silver Cerebral for International offers ballpark fees with tongue only half in cheek, for the assassination of superhumans, created by power set, alien beings, or full-blown deities. Agents recruited for the Wild Pack are uh, required to demonstrate an ability to mentally compartmentalize the personal from the professional, so as to pursue profit without uh, ethical obstruction. Off the clock, Sankarians are noted for a culture prioritizing honor and affection. On the clock, SSI operators are required to observe only one moral imperative. Get the job done. <clears throat> But, uh, as I said, Kurt and Silver are, uh, apparently enjoying evenings together, and, um, turns out that Silver Sable's a, a Lila Cheney fan. Her father once took her to a concert. It was a cover for a, uh, for a job, but, uh, and Silver also asks what came of uh, what happened to uh, Lila. Like most of the teleporters, she was taken out early at the Hellfire Gala. But uh, Kurt remembers about uh, Mystique, manages to find her. She still seems to be a bit off. We also get the lyrics for uh, 
a lot of the change songs. She was super positional, which uh, both Kurt and uh, Silver sang earlier. While uh, trying to help Mystique, Kurt runs into the first uh, of Director Vulture's hounds, Feral and Dagger. He's caught by surprise, and also uh, Cloak is there as well. Cloak goes after Mystique, and also uh, Kurt, though Kurt uses his new uh, sword to briefly short, uh, short out Cloak's programming. Kurt and Mystique hide in a dumpster, and uh, the three hounds find additional uh, mutants elsewhere in the city. Kurt realizes that uh, they that Orcus got access to trans the uh, transmode virus after uh, Warlock's sacrifice and tried to stop Nimrod from taking over uh, Krakoa. And uh, the, the entire reasoning it for you basically uh, Vulture tends to utilize the uh, the transmode virus to basically give uh, humanity what mutants refuse to immortality. And that is where the issue ends. And given the uh, given the fact that they are uh, referred to as hounds, um. They do have the same facial markings as uh, the hounds from uh, Day of the Future Past, a la um, Rachel Summers. Um, I have to admit to being somewhat surprised that uh, a young Rory Cochran has not been introduced, but surprised, but uh, yeah, at the same time, more of a focus on, on newer characters or Characters in unexpected positions is kind of appreciated, actually. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got X-Force number 46. Where we left off, Colossus was, was, was starting to break free from his brother's control, and uh, Mikhail had been shot by an Orcus operative that uh, had been procured to basically um, be... To, give Mikhail uh, influence within Orcus. Meanwhile, uh, Sage and Domino had gone to speak with uh, Doctor Strange about a ring they had uh, recovered from one of Mikhail's associates. And basically it was just that um, explained that Mikhail creates pocket dimensions, the ring is a means to enter, And so, the issue begins with Colossus trying to uh, reconcile with his injured bro his injured brother. Though Mikhail intends to continue being a piece of shit, um, Mikhail and uh, Colossus continue to fight. Um, Strange manages to open to open the door to uh, Mikhail's pocket dimension, and uh, Domino and Sage go through. Sage arrives in the room in which uh, Omega Red is being tortured, dealing with his torturers and then freeing Omega Red. Domino ends up in the arena that uh, Wolverine is fighting in, and the two of them deal with. Uh, the soldiers she's fighting, who are all uh, nesting dolls, which they discover as they kill, as they start killing them. Of course, with the nesting dolls, kill one, smaller one pops out. Kill the smaller one, and even smaller one pops out, and so on and so forth. Um, then. Uh, the Chronicler and Jun Wei are also trying to figure out how to get out of uh, the pocket dimension because it's clear that things are fa it's falling apart. They end up in uh, 
Kate Omega's cell for a moment, and then all three of them continue to tumble through the void that uh, is created by Mikhail's pocket universe. Uh, Wolverine and Domino are having problems with the Dessing Dolls, but get an unexpected assist from uh, Deadpool. Who states that he apparently, on the way through the portal, he apparently goosed uh, Doctor Strange and discovered that Strange actually has some surprisingly firm butt buttocks. Okay. But, uh... Colossus uh, kills his brother, ripping out his heart. And the pocket dimension begins to collapse. Thankfully, uh, the members of X Force, as well as Jun Wee and the Chronicler, are managed to, are brought through into the uh, Sanctum Sectorum. With Colossus saying that um, his deciding his fate is the next mission is definitely X Force's next mission. There's a handful of uh, journal entries about the Chronicler. Uh, the final one being a. Um, Something of an epilogue for the story, basically saying that um, X Force attempts to recruit him, saying that he'd be incredibly useful. But he kind of said, "Hey, I I get it, but I really just I don't want to do that." Yeah, and so he works in a bookshop in Paris and lives lives above it, and just just kind of enjoying life. And aside from writing his journal, he has no desire to put pen to paper. Likely, never will. After the uh, after finishing his, his the journal entry, but one never knows when the muse will strike. And that is where the issue ends. I, I I'm glad that this. Uh, there are times when I do get a little irritated with a uh, storyline that gets dragged out, but this is one of those cases where it was dragged out, where it, it, it wasn't so much dragged out, but it did go on, it went on for a while, and it worked for it to be, to go on as long as it did. Also, I, I totally get the, I get the uh, concept of a writer planning, starting, starting a, a Planning the, the the opening, planning the opening scene of a story, in early on, and then as the book goes on, it goes it blooms into a whole a full blown story to wrap it up. Moving on though to our next book, we've got X Men Red number seventeen. Where we left off, ooh. Genesis had. Uh, Kind of brought brought about something something close to a pretty solid win against uh, Aurora's forces on Araco. Um The horseman Pestilus had been killed by Death, who uh, joined Aurora's uh, forces, and uh, though Nova had been hit with one of it Death's, uh, or Pestilus's arrows, and Apocalypse returned to Araco. Also, in last week's issue of X-Men, Sunfire had returned to Araco with uh, Redroot, and uh, was, was seemed to be def definitely helping, Apo helping Apocalypse with uh, his goals on Araco. And there are others, too, as we, we see as the issue begins. Um, Apocalypse has freed Gabriel from his prison, Vulcan, basically making a, uh, a circle with four elements. Fire, air, rock, and water. Apocalypse is the water. Air is uh, the... The uh, his, de his demon counterpart, if I recall, um, Gabriel's the stone, 
and Sunfire is the is the flight is the flame. Um, Storm's forces ha have been are in retreat, with Storm still uh, ruminating over using uh, Uranus against Genesis's forces. It seems though that she uh, hits it with a bolt of lightning, which uh, nullifies it, much to uh, the chagrin of John Ironfire. Um, we learn that the Nova Force is keeping Nova alive, but only just. With Sunspot pointing out that, you know, that Nova didn't take the arrow for uh, Storm so that she could uh, press some kill a, kill a million mutants button, which Storm agrees. As the two are speaking on this, Apocalypse returns or shows up. Upon seeing death, well, Apocalypse states that he's that uh, he's impressed by his son. Though death uh, does point out his uh, remorse for killing uh, pestilence. Apocalypse at least tells his son that life teaches, and that uh, death has learned. Uh, he, he should continue his lessons. Storm meets with Apocalypse while John Ironfire goes after uh, the White Sword, making his way through uh, the White Sword's 100. Um, Apocalypse's ritual uh, comes to, is uh, pulled up is pulled off. You know, very cool looking uh, montage of uh, moments from throughout X Men in comics history. Really show that off. It's really cool, including uh, artwork from way back in uh, X. I think it may be from X Factor number six, which was uh, Apocalypse's first appearance. But, uh, on Rocco Prime, uh, Sobinar is, uh, speaking with Genesis, or trying to talk to her while she speaks. He finally, er, he finally manages to cut out and explain that something is coming, and points it out. It's Krakoa. With Storm. In the lead, and she st she tells uh, Genesis uh, as Genesis claims to speak for Rocco. Genesis should raise her island and fight, and that is where the issue ends. I can't say I'm entirely surprised with the whole with the story kind of having a oh yes our heroes. Have it suffer a, a rather massive defeat and regroup, but it, it's one of those. That, yes, it's a trope, especially in stories about well wars in particular. But it's it's a trope that if done at least halfway decently works, and this was done well beyond halfway decently. So. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got The Amazing Spider-Man number 37. Now, Gang Wars not yet started up yet. I believe it starts next month. But where we left off, um, the Goblin Queen, Madame Pryor, had, had uh, asked that uh, 
state her, you know, she's trying to recover the the demons of hers that have are still running loose in New York, including Recrap. Spider Man uh, decides to go out and try and find him, and he does. But so does a repossession demon. Recrap claims he's working on a case, and so he can't be sent back just yet. Not until he works out this case. Also, the repossession demon recognizes Spider Man, and seems to, and even seems to know that Spider Man is Peter Parker. So the issue begins at Peter Parker's apartment. The repossession demon is looking at a picture of uh, Peter and Randy Robertson when Randy shows up at uh, Peter's door. <clears throat> and the demon uh, goes after Peter, or after Randy, as, as, a, uh, as collateral. So, Redcrap uh, fills, fills Spider-Man on what he's been doing. He was fighting uh, Kraken the Hunter when the Repossession Demon showed up and uh, ate Kraken and then went to a uh, yeah, went to a uh, an apartment building and then an attic and this became a regular thing. Well, they're discussing this at Oscorp, and uh, Osborne shows up. Well, a bit, uh, being a bit uh, colder to uh, Peter than usual. <clears throat> the repossession demon uh, meets with uh, Madeline, basically saying that. Uh, He's work. He, he's making his way toward finishing his assignment, but uh, well, Recrap's made a friend, and well, the repossessor find, tends to uh, find his targets through his through their friends. We have an interlude for the upcoming uh, gang war crossover in Long Island City with. Uh, Hammerhead insisting that the the old Magia boss is back, back him. But they're a little hesitant, seeing as how Hammerhead ordered the hit on Count Nefaria's daughter. Hammerhead says that he didn't. Then Count Nefaria enter, joins the conversation, explains that he's the one who put the hit out on, uh, or that ordered the hit on his daughter, Madame Mask. The idea being that the bosses will want to look to the trust of the tenants to prevent a costly gang war. And if the crime was in New York, uh, New York City, wish to survive, they will bow to the Magia once again. So Peter and Recrap uh, are doing some digging, but the uh, repossessor shows up. Um, Peter leaves, goes, heads back home for a moment, discovers the uh, the wreckage. From uh, the repossessor having been there, and goes goes out to save, trying to save Randy. But uh, Red Crap is returned to limbo, where he um, and it's ba basically the escapees are placed in limbo's limbo. Spider-Man remembers everything Recrap has said and begins looking around for an attic that uh, Repossessor may have hidden Randy away in. Repossessor shows up and uh, Spidey asks where, where Randy is. Repossessor takes his full demon form and tries it and seemingly eats Peter. And that is where the issue ends. Interesting. Curious to see how this plays out, especially to see what the, the
the connection between the re repossessor and uh, Peter is, but uh, I'm to be fair, I'm actually you know, more uh, looking forward to uh, Gang War than this story wrapping up. So yeah, moving on though to our last book for the moment, we've got Captain Marvel Dark Tempest number five, wrapping up the Innocenti's uh, Captain Marvel miniseries. Where we left off, um, Captain Marvel had uh, managed to find one of the uh, Feral Five, and who had somewhat come to her senses, Kazaya, and she, uh, and, um, they knew that something was wrong with Blake, the scientist, the, uh, the robot. Meanwhile, Nada had uh, convinced the rest of the Feral Five to return to Earth, and uh, basically, kind of, uh, basically. Um, Turn things back, you know, taking our technology, you know, stopping inside of technology and the, in all honesty, strip money of the planet. Um, and also getting Nitro to, she also, you know, make, she also been making moves on making sure that Nitro will uh, take out Captain Marvel. Nada manages to get the rest of the Feral Five uh, to go with her. Um, Carol and Kazaya had basically them leave, but too late. When they're attacked by Nitro, who rants about uh, how rough things have been for him since he killed Captain Marvel, and. Uh, Apparently, people that want nothing to do with him. And he knows that Carol isn't Marvell, but well, she took his name, and well, he hates all the Marvels. But uh, he caused he caused an avalanche. Meanwhile, uh, Jess and Carol's friends are heading or trying to find uh, Carol. When a uh, singularity opens up over the planet, and the feral, the feral four and Nada come through, their rocket goes through the uh, singularity. As Carol manages to get get out from under the the avalanche that uh, um, Nitro caused, the planet has some magnetic problems, so landing safely isn't exactly feasible. But Spider Woman help, joins in, and uh, they at least stop Nitro, and then head back to the rocket and head back home. Um, the the four the already re the four already returned members or the three some of the feral the feral four I should say have uh, decided that they are. Not gonna. They uh, they're gonna help. Yeah, they'll help Nada, but on their own terms. They're trying to figure out what to do, how, how exactly to do that. They've also brought the uh, alien child back with them. Um. Meanwhile, Nada tries to get Blake to uh, use the Blake bot to. Uh, Work with a to manipulate quantum computers, but they all work in qubits, not ones and zeros, so it's kind of foreign to uh, the bot. But they're able to uh, cause a rather large uh, power outage. Carol deals with the, with the explosion of a a uh, lithium uh, chip plant as well as a, as a, as a satellite. Nada is defeated. Blake rejoins the Feral Five, and uh, Kazaya decides is elected the leader after uh, Nada's defeat. She seems to be with her head most squarely on her shoulders. But uh, Carol's back in Maine, and one of the uh, one of her buddies from the pub has been taking care of Shuby while she was gone, and that is where the series. This mini series ends. This was a neat mini series. Um, 
I'd be curious. I feel like there were there's a lot more to Nada that could be told and should be told than was. Um, it felt like there were parts of her uh, parts of her past that she wasn't telling that might make her seem less sympathetic. But uh, anyways, that's gonna do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Mastodon, PayPal, and and. Patreon can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying live long and rock hard.